The B-25 Mitchell was an iconic World War II medium bomber in service of the United States, although it also flew with other countries, including the Royal Air Force. Around 10,000 were built. I've got just the one. It's in 172nd scale. It's from Airfix. Hang around and find out how I got on with it, right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today is build day on the kit of the week, which is the North American Mitchell in 172nd scale from Airfix. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these and want to know what you get in the box, then there's a box opening video already available on the channel. If you've got one in your stash or you've got one on the way and you want to know how to put it together, you're in very much the right place. If you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, give it the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are released. If you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs, one of which is the Airfix program. So if you're thinking of buying a Mitchell or indeed anything else, you want to go through the Airfix online store, why not click on the link in the information box below there? Because whatever you buy at no extra cost to you, FX will make a donation to this channel. And you can still use your FX Club 10% discount and, of course, your Hornby Hobby Awards points as well. Another thing you could do, of course, is send me something to build, which is what Joe Olmo did when he sent me this kit. So, Joe, thank you very much, my friend. This one is for you. OK, enough of all that. Let's get on and make this Mitchell in one seventy second scale from FX. Okay, so I've pre-painted the um, control columns and the instrument panels according to the instructions. I'll put the decals on here for the instrument panels and I might give the um, this control um, sort of center console there a bit of a dry brush just to bring out some detail. One point to note is that this, on this decal of the main instrument set, uh, this actually sort of folds down into here. Yeah, this this so like one piece that includes this bit on the table here. So don't be surprised if it looks too long for this because it does fit over that as well. Once the paint is dry, you can put the control columns in there. Then the instrument panel just kind of hooks over the top of the control panel like so. You can put them together first, I've just found it easier this way. And we can put the cruise seats in, the right hand seat, the co-pilot is a bit shorter than the pilot's seat. Maybe the pilot's seat is more armoured or something. The co-pilot, flight engineer, whatever, can go and do whatever he needs to do. I'm not sure. Someone will tell me. There we go. Yeah, like that. Then at the front of the cockpit area, there's this bulkhead. It goes so the details towards the front because that will be uh, visible through the nose. This There's a combing that will cover all of this. So you won't be able to see into this part. So yeah, that just fits on like so. Then at the rear of the cabin, there's another divider. It goes in here. Like so. Three. And then we fit this base part onto here, like so, the bottom of the fuselage assembly, the, or cockpit assembly, I should say. Like there. Then the spar goes on the end here. There's a, a ridge here. You can see that it sits on that. And then it slots into a tab on the base as well. 
like so. And we can put the bombardier's chair into the front of this. And there's this sort of saddle thing sits on for actually aiming the bombs. Down here. And we'll paint those khaki when they're set. Three. While the nose cockpit area is setting up, I'm going to um, attend to the bomb racks in the bomb bay. Now I'm having the bomb bay open, so you do this. If you're not having the bomb bay open, then you don't need to worry about any of this. Now, this is the bomb rack. And um, I don't know if you can see, it has to sort of sit on these two ribs here. And there's a little tab, so it sits in a particular position. So it's right on top of the ribs. And then there's a little tab here, which locks the sort of up and down position. And that's where it goes. And so we get some, let's make sure the thin cement is the best option here. And just run that down the inside of these tracks like so. And that should then keep them in place. Then the bomb racks go into the side. It's easiest to sort of push them up like that and then sort of lay them flat. And just make sure they stay put. Maybe use a clamp or something just to hold them in place. What I will do is also just dry brush a bit of detail in here. I'm going to be using quite a strong white um, for this dry brushing because when all this is closed up you won't be able to see a lot of it and it will be um, in dark so you'll need the high contrast to be seen but just give it a quick sort of a quick sort of dry brush going over it just pumps up that uh, contrast really and so you'll be able to notice it better when it's all shut up next you have to fit this rear spar to this bulkhead here so rear spar to this bulkhead and let that dry then we'll just give that a quick spray of color as well the next issue is going to be the nose weight, they say 25 grams, and they want 25 grams to sit in this compartment here. This is 25 grams of lead shot. Um, I'm just gonna see how many I can fit in there. And I may have to maybe glue some up along here. I won't be able to see in this sort of section here. I might have to glue some up in there as well. And also flatten them maybe to see what we can do. But let's see see how far we can go. Now I've painted the bombs um, in olive drab and put the decals on. They go in, there's these larger holes in the rack. And those are where these bombs go. So let me just get into the rack like that. And just sit against it like so. There we go. And it's the same on the other side. Now, there, there are these two um, side pieces that go into the fuselage. You can see these big holes here. Um, probably because they're particular to the Mark, the RAF Mark II. They do have transparent parts on them, so they need to be masked off. Now I've got this um, set from Peewit. The reason why I'm mentioning this one is that it has the um, inside and outside masks for here. So you can mask both sides of the glass, paint the insides to match the um, interior green of the aircraft, and do a little bit of weathering and all that, you know, just dirty it up a bit. Um, which obviously 
it's going to be difficult to do otherwise. So it's really good that this particular set comes with both. I'm sure others do, but you might want to check it out. Set scale mates or someone like that just to make sure. So I'll get on with masking off the in both sides, but mainly the interior I want to because I want to uh, spray that before it goes on the aircraft. So, OK, what I'm going to do now is put these two halves together. Um, you'll notice I put the bombs in place. And we're going to start with the this forward cockpit assembly. Now, what you will notice here is the amount of lead shot I've used. As I've put so much in, I had to actually sand it down to meet the console. I've also put some lead shot in the front here, behind the instrument panel. Um, super glued everything. And hopefully that will be enough. It should be. I did weigh it out and it should be about the right amount. So that's the front spar. The rear spar goes in here like this, this way around. Then there's a roof piece that goes in on the top there. Now I'm going to set all these in place and um, tack some glue in and put it all together. Then these bomb bay door opening jacks go in to the bomb bay like so. So you can see the, the jack reaches out to that. You might actually, maybe that should be painted silver, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't say so. Then there's the mounting for the belly gum. And um, you can see it's, it's got like this U shape and there's a U shape in here. So it just goes together like so. That sits in there. And then I think that's pretty much everything. It can then, the two halves can then go together. There we go, um, just start um, cinching these up, taping them in place and leave it to set up before we check out the um, some of these lines, fill where we need to. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much done and it is very nose heavy, <laughs> very nose heavy. So we should be fine on that score as well. So there it is, all joined up and um, taped and the seams have been cemented and I'll just wait for the cement to cure and then start just checking out some of these seams to see if any need filling. So before we put the wings on, there are four holes here to drill out. They're one millimeter holes and these for a couple of um, air ducts or I'm not sure if they're ducts or vents, depends on which way around they point, but they go on a little bit later. Then the wings go on to the fuselage, like so. So there's a double track here to position the wing. There's a track here for the rear spar. And there's a guide on the side of the body as well. So you can get it up nice and close. And I'd glue that in first and let that set before we try and put the bottom wing on. And also before we put the wing halves together, we need to put the landing lights in and then just give them a touch of silver on the back um, to make them look like lights. Then when those are set, the lower halves of the wing can go on, be taped up and uh, some ultra thin to secure them. Three. Now we can also at this point put in the side panels, but Please, please remember, if you've used masks on the inside, paint masks, take them off now. Once this goes in, you will not be able to reach them if you leave them on. And that yellow is what you're going to see from the outside if you forget the paint masks, OK? So paint masks off the inside if you've used them. 
Then when they're ready, you can just slot them into place. They just drop into place nicely on the side here and secure them with a bit of extra thin cement. Actually, if you do leave them in by accident, don't despair. You can probably get to them with a pair of curved tweezers from the mid-upper turret, but it really is best if you don't do that. So we go on to the tailplane now. Horizontal stabilizer, as it is so frequently known. The uh, components that elevators just sit in the bear, and then the rest of the tailplane clips on top. As usual, tape it up, bit of glue, job done. Three. And the tailplane, when it's ready, sits in place and this is a really good tight fit on the aircraft fins go together like so in two halves each with the rudder component separate these go together and then in this part they attach at the end of the tail planes One of the slightly stranger parts of this build is the next bit, which is we have to put the engine in the cell, or part of the engine in the cell in. But we mustn't glue it. And it really isn't very obvious how this is going to work. Okay, so that fits in. Okay, that fits in like that. Okay. Fits in like that. And then this piece has to go in and there's a little dent there for it to sit in like this but you do not glue the nacelle in place what we're doing is setting the position of the undercarriage leg and it just seems very strange to me to have to do it this way there we go that sits in there that sits in there Right, so then we leave that alone, uh, airfix safe for an hour. Onto the engines now, and the two banks of cylinders go together, and there is a little peg here that locates into a very difficult to see hole, but they also the banks lie up in alternate layers like that. Then there's the front cover of the engine assembly, the uh, propeller mechanism and all that goes on like that. Now remember to put the propeller shaft into the front gearing of the engine and then just pop that onto the front of the cylinder banks. There are three so asymmetric pins and there are three matching holes and you can line them up fairly straightforwardly. So that's done. Okay, I will admit I didn't put the prop shaft in first. I should have done, I forgot to. So I painted it and then suddenly remembered ah uh ah -uh, need the prop shaft. So I've filmed it going back in. Do not forget the prop shaft, okay? Thank you. Confession over. Okay, so now we can put the engine into the engine cover and then they sell the fairing, if you like. You can see there's this, this ring of, sort of posts, if you like, that it sits on. But one of them, this one, is longer than all the others. And that's your guide that lines up with this notch on the top here. You can just see this little notch on the top here. Okay, so those should line up, hopefully. All right, there you go. So you can see the notch in the etched and the little poster. And then that's in the right position. So it means that the gearbox here is in the right orientation for when it goes on the plane. Then the cooling flaps, ring, ring of cooling flaps goes on. There are three little notches for it, 
uh, the gap in the ring lines up. There's kind of like a flat spot here on the uh, engine cover, and that's where this gap in the ring lines up. Right now to the engine nacelles. They come in two halves, like so. And pretty straightforward to glue together. There's this part here that goes in. These are different for the two schemes, so make sure you've got the right one. And then there's this part that goes in here, just kind of like the I guess the back wall of the engine. Now because it sort of goes in kind of feels like it sort of hooks in in a way. I guess this is why you have to um put the the undercarriage on first, take off the uh the, the nacelle piece, assemble the engine and then put it all back on because maybe you can't sort of hook this in and set it in place if the nacelles are actually on the wing. I'm guessing that's why it had to be done this way. Then the engine goes on and you can see there's a they're, they're different each side. The there's the cutout that goes on the top and then there's a little scallop taken out, a little curve taken out for the exhaust. So they only go on one side. Um on the other engine the scallops on this side so it'll only they are sided engines, but generally easy enough to put on. Then when the nacelles are finished, they can just be hooked over the undercarriage leg and then just snapped into position on the wing. You can start putting the transparencies on at the cockpit here. Um, but we also need to make sure we put in a couple of other little things. First, there's this equipment rank here. And then there is the bomb site. Famous northern bomb site that has to go in here. Let's quickly paint these. And then the rest of the transparencies can go on. I'm also going to put the flaps in, mine being deployed, so there's a part for deployed flaps, there's a part for undeployed flaps as well. So just make sure you choose the right one. Let's so. I've primed the aircraft. I've used the um, MIG one shot primer in grey. And now I'm going to do some pre shading. So I've got my airbrush here. I've got it down to what about 15 psi. Uh, I've got quite a thin mix of paint. And I'm just going to just put black along these panel lines here. I've also got the um, the travel of the needle restricted with the screw at the back, so I can't put too much black on at once. Then when I've got the um, seams blocked out, I like to do a bit of highlighting in the panels with a little bit of white. Then when it's complete, just leave it to dry for ages and ages, just properly leave it secure. And then we'll look at putting some paint on it in a bit. Then when the underside is done and you've masked it off, you can start on the top surface. Right. 
to the paint. I've done the top coats of uh, olive drab, um, which looks lovely. Um, it's really picked up the pre-shading very, very well. Um, I've put on some invasion stripes. This is a very, very simple, just uh, masking and spraying. It's, there's nothing magical about this. And um, I've looked on the references, and this is where the... I've seen some photos from the Imperial War Museum, actually. This is where the uh, body stripes were. The top stripes on the plane, the, the images I've seen pretty much cover this area, but they're very, very faded post D-Day. So this is an aircraft that I'm assuming this is actually being used on D-Day, so the stripes are going to be fresh. As the war continued, they tended to not bother about the top stripes, maybe even paint them out or certainly let them get weathered beyond all recognition but they did keep the tail stripes and i think the underside stripes but definitely the top stripes just got less so, so if you're thinking of maybe october november of 44 and onwards then maybe you could just sort of not have these even or have them re put them on there but then sort of go over again with the olive drab and just really knock them down so they're almost invisible the leading edges of the wings were black. Actually, the leading edges of all the surfaces were black, but the, the wings in particular were black, had a lot of black mark, but these weathered really quickly and really heavily. So what I've done is I've put down an aluminium coat first. I'm then going to spray this with something called chipping solution. Let that dry thoroughly, then put the black on top, and then let that dry, and then with a brush just dab bits of water onto the black and you can chip away the black and show the aluminium underneath it's a really convincing look and you can be quite aggressive on this wing because they did get very very chipped the guns for the lower turret i've taken off the uh, the support on there i've taken off this top part uh says to do that in instructions you only have that uh, if the guns are going to be lowered, if the turret is going to be lowered. Okay, so the guns go like so. Up here? Yeah, like that. The, the the two um, supports of the guns that go through, they meet up and lock into each other. Okay, I'm going to put the um, belly turret together first. Now, I've <clears throat> remember, I just glued these guns together through the central support and then nipped off the support because the turret is going to be retracted. The uh, turret itself will just get sprayed with all over grey because there's no one in it. So remotely operated turret and the guns sit like so so the support is on the the rim of the turret like that okay All right to make the upper gun turret first thing i'll do is mount the guns on here these little tabs connect with the support like so yes i am aware one of the guns is broken i do have the end of the barrel and i'll be putting it back on once i've got everything assembled otherwise it won't go th i'm sure it won't uh, go through the glass and survive and this sighting piece sort of goes under there does it go under there or go over there? Maybe it goes over that. It goes over that. There we go. If it goes over that, how's it? Right. Okay. So it's actually this bar goes on there. Right. And the sighting piece. 
so it kind of clips around it and settles into this sorry settles into this notch here okay let's put that in There we go, like so. And that can go, uh, but when we put the gun through the turret, I'll put that barrel back on. Three, then the ammunition feed here, um, sort of slots into that. Does it slot that way around? Yeah. Slots that way around. Then the whole piece can go into the turret. Again, you can see, so here at the front, it sort of clips in there. And at the back, there's a couple of um, support points there. And then that's that. And then glue that in, um, wait until it's nice and dry, and then try and put that gun barrel back on. The nose gun can go in now. I've painted the nose piece off the A model because I didn't want to put this in first and then do the masking and painting it because it would have broken. So that goes in. That just needs a drop of glue. Now, because it's on a clear part, I'm just going to use a drop of my canopy glue, the um, AK Crystal Magic. Just get the top off of that. Um, you can probably use regular good, but because there's so much canopy immediately around it. Just going to put a tiny drop of PVA. PVA on there. Two, three. Right, so now <clears throat> we've got the paint on top of the chipping fluid. What we can do is just gently add bits of water. To sort of kind of rehydrate this chipping fluid stuff. Let that sink in for a moment. And then see it starts to take the paint off in a little bit. I would sort of say be really careful about this because otherwise you'll be repainting and redoing it but as you go along really gently bits will start breaking out bits will dip off and and just sort of work your way along the the, the wing the wingtip sort of leading edge not wingtip work your way along the, the leading edge here and it will Will work, it will come off. And um it will look great to just keep working along the wing like that. Three. Getting close in now, and so I'm going to put the nose wheel assembly into the front of the cockpit. Now the undercarriage you can see that the pin the hole for the pin is slightly off center. Um, it is on the hub as well, because this places where the flat spot of the tire goes. The main gear doors are very small on this, which is cool. They just sit in like so. Then there's a a small connecting bar that goes between the door and the actuator leg on the gear. Gear that goes into the leg here on the far side at the actuator leg and then into the edge of the door itself. 
quite a delicate operation getting all this together. There we go. The crew doors can go in as well if you're using them. The belly turret can go in as well. I remember I've had this so it's recessed, so it sits right down inside there. But you can still see the guns in their storage positions. The mid upper turret can go in as well. The last part of this is always putting the propellers on. Instantly, I just had to drill these out slightly. They wouldn't go on as they are. I had to drill them out to about 1.8 mil um, for them to fit on properly. But once they're I'll drill out, they're ready to go. So there it is, the Airfix 172nd scale Mitchell. This is the Mark II, the Royal Air Force version, um, done here in the all over olive drab but with d-day markings um as my entry into the group build being run by james skiffins i really enjoyed making this kit it uh, does go together very well um issues really just the the nose glazing obviously takes time to get right because there is a lot of it um the and the carriage is fine, actually, really, really straightforward. Um, it's it's slightly odd that you have to put the undercarriage leg on, then build the nacelle, and then put that on over the leg again. And essentially, you have to spend all the build with the, the main gear legs dangling down. But we survived. That's not a problem. Um, I've loved using the Tamiya XF paint on this. It's given a lovely finish. And once I've, I've put all the... Uh, the decals on i've gone over it with um, the clear matte as well to mat down the decals um it weathers easily it's just a real joy to use um yeah the kit's great the only the only thing i would say about the kit is the nose weights getting the nose weights right is a little bit of an issue but really not anything terribly difficult at the end of the day so yeah very enjoyable kit if you're thinking about getting a mitchell yeah this one is is good I really enjoyed it. There it is then. That's a really nice kit. And there's a couple of issues. I you know the fit of the fuselage on the top seam was a and it had had to do a little bit of work on that. The uh, nose weight is a bit of an issue, but not insurmountable. And I did have to drill out the uh, backs of the propellers slightly to fit the propeller axles. Other than that, it all went together swimmingly. I mean, you've probably even not even noticed that I broke the main canopy and had to repair it and put it back together again, had you? Well, you know now, so let's just uh, keep it between you and me. I won't tell anyone else. I think I got away with it. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the show, and I hope you do, please remember to give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And if you haven't done so already, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. You'll be notified of all my future videos as they are published. Thank you so much for coming on today. Hope to see you again on the channel very soon. Take good care now and goodbye.